Hi guys, Yannick here for Yannick's Photo School and we're jumping back into Lightroom today on another before and after um, tutorial on how I actually ended up with this beautiful final image. Um, let me show you the original image. This is it, quite underexposed, um, kind of grayish um, and I wanted to create an old style feel to that photo, something that was taken a long, long time ago. Uh, a little bit of grain in there too. So um, it, it's actually pretty easy to achieve this once you've played around with Lightroom. And I'm going to show you how I went from this to this right now. So let's get right to it. First thing you want to do is create a virt uh, virtual copy of your raw file. So just right click on your thumbnail and select create virtual copy and there we go now we're working on a virtual copy now the first thing I do and I always do that is I scroll down to camera calibration here on the right side panel and I choose one of the uh, Nikon modes here if you have a uh, Canon I'm sure there are some presets in there for Canon too and I like choosing camera landscape since this is a landscape and that's basically how my camera or how I actually saw it apart from the fact that it's light, slightly underexposed after that well let's fix exposure so let's just crank exposure up till I like it that looks about right you don't want to overexpose it either because you're gonna lose the detail and the quality of the fog which creates the mystery of this image and already there it's starting to look pretty good now there's something about the crop in this image that I don't really like. It's pretty centered. Um, so I think there's too much sky. The sky is pretty bland and there's no detail. Uh, but we do have some really nice details here uh, on the icy river down here and the fog. So I'm going to keep that part and just chop off some of the sky. So I cl click on my crop tool and all I'll do is just crop some out right about there. That, that looks good. There's a nice little curve in there and I just double click on there and I got my crop. Alright. Next step is to give it a bit more contrast, a bit more punch. So let's just boost the contrast a little bit, see how that works. It's not bad. Let's bring the blacks up a little bit. There we go. You can see those buildings a bit more. And uh, a little bit of clarity in there to pop things up and pop the mid-tones a little bit. Wow, that looks really good. Now since we're going to be creating a uh, sepia-ish uh, type of image, um, I don't want to go all monochrome on this and just have like a, a sepia color. I want to keep some of the natural uh, colors in the houses. You can see here there's some reds in there. So we, I want to keep those in there. So I'm going to use split toning right down here the split toning dialog box if it's ever, if it's closed like this just click on the right side arrow and it'll open the dialog box for you now you want to choose a color so just click on the color picker and you can click and hold and drag around click and drag I should say click hold and drag and try to find your f favorite sepia tone in there and once you have it let go and just click on the, the dialog box and there you have it. Now I find this a little oversaturated, so I can just bring that saturation down just a tad. Like so. Good. I'm happy with that. Now, if you actually wanted this pure sepia, what you would do is to, in your main panel, in your basic panel, just go down to saturation and just bring it all the, all the way back. And there you can see, if I zoom in, we just have the one color that we chose in our split toning. All right, in my case, I'll just double click on this, put this to zero, and we're back in business. All right. Now, the next thing I wanted to do is to get a nice little vignette around this. Just to, you see lots of old style photos that have a vignetting effect on them, so that's what I wanted to put. So let's get to vignetting. So you'll find this in the vignettes dialog. And let me just bring that all the way down. I always like to start full blast. And I see that that's a little too much. So let me bring it back just a tad like that. 
And let's play with the midpoint a little bit. Bring it in a little bit. How does that look? Bringing it out. Maybe bringing it in just a tad. Not much. I like that. Good. Now we're starting to look like this image, slowly but surely. Now the next thing I did is I I'm a guy that likes uh, hot and cold in my in my image, and right now we don't see that. I like the contrast of a little bluish tint and a hot orange tint. So let me just go and do that. And I used the graduated filter in Lightroom for that. Now I'll I'll put an orange glow th to the sky and a blue tint to the water, to the icy water. So just go and choose your favorite orange color for the sky. Just click and drag and bring it all the way down so that it touches some of the houses. There we go. Now of course this is way oversaturated so you can just bring down the opacity until you like it. And I like it at around this, around 40. So that's good. Now I'm going to, uh, oops, I closed it. I'm going to select another color in the bluish tints now and do the same thing but from below. Make sure that it comes all the way up to the houses. Here you want a nice blend. And again, it's super saturated, so let me bring that down. We want that old style feeling here. And in this case, even 30 is good for this image. And now I can close the dialog box. All right. Now if we look at the image there and our image, it's almost perfect. Now what's what's left is something that's not doable in Lightroom, unfortunately. It's to add some grain to the image. I think it really, really makes this image. So we'll go into Photoshop for that. I'm cheating. I know I said this was a Lightroom before and after, but it, it's a good image as is, but just to give it that extra edge to it, I'm going to go into Photoshop. So once the image is opened in Photoshop, all you need to do is go into Filter. There's a uh, one called Noise. Add Noise. I like choosing Gaussian because it's a little bit all over the place. And if monochromatic isn't tick, tick it. If not, you get all sorts of uh, color in your in your noise. And we want it all um, basically without any color in it. And the amount, again, that's very subjective. It's up to you. Between 5 and 20% usually does it. I like it at 10. You can look at before and after. Just gives it that nice old feeling to it. All you need to do after that, control S to save. We can close that image in Photoshop. Go back into Lightroom. And here's our final image. All right, before and after. So we went back in time. This looks like it was taken a long, long time ago, and that's the desired effect I wanted. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.